All right, everybody, it's Thursday night, which means time for Dr. Carlin Live. Thursday night, 2018, whole new episode, Dr. Carlin Live. Thank you, as always, for watching, for hanging out, for joining me, because, you know, it's pretty fun. We have a good time. But I today have a super fun, super special um, friend that I wanted to bring on and introduce you guys to. She's a super babe, she's super great, and this is the first time that we are going to be doing a full-on split-screen Facebook interview thing, so stick with me because we're all a little bit learning here, and uh, we're going to add this wonderful jewel to our conversation. So let's see what happens when... Let's see if we can bring her on. Ah, Yay! It's working, oh, it's working, it's working. <laughs> it's totally working. I am Hold just on. sharing this out on my page. On all of your things? Yeah. Okay. Sounds fantastic. So one sec. Yay! Share. This is so great that we can do this on Facebook now. This so so for cool. Who are what, right? For, so for those of you who are watching, this is my first time that I'm doing an interview uh, where somebody is not here in the same room with me. If anything, actually this lovely human who you guys are about to meet is all the way in Edmonton, um, which is pretty far from me, a few provinces away from me, and it's really exciting. So this is my first split screen interview, and I couldn't have asked for a more awesome, more rad, more badass, beautiful babe of a guest. Everybody, yeah. Dr. Carlin Live audience, I want to introduce you to Kat. Hey! Thank you for having hey, me. Thank you for joining me. This is the best. So, so Kat, I haven't given everyone like um, a, a rundown of like who you are, what you do, uh, but I mean, like I did in the description. So, Kat, for those of you who don't know who Kat is, Kat, Kat is an author. She is a truth teller. She is self-improved as fuck. She is a life coach. You are a sex positive, fantastic, super babe. Which I love. Fuck yeah. Fuck and yeah. Fuck yeah. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Did I miss any more of your awesomeness? Um, just that I'm an erotic blueprint sex coach too. So that's something I'm really expanding into that's super exciting. Yes. Yeah. Like erotic blueprint sex coach, which is really freaking cool. Yeah. You guys will be hearing more about that because hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be joining Kat in Edmonton for some fun stuff in the next couple months. Yay. Yay! Yay! Okay, yay! <laughs> so, so here's the story. So the story is is that we met um, each other last year in August. Was it August? Yeah. August. Yeah. August at the Wanderlust Festival. We were both asked to be like the sex people. Yeah. At Wanderlust Montreal, <laughs> and and then we, like we met and we were like, yeah, no, we love each other now. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah. We went on an epic food run. <laughs> <laughs> we went on the most epic food Sex run. and food, best things ever. <laughs> right? Sex, food, music. Those are my three favorite things, Kat. Are I don't they? know if you know that. Yeah, and everybody else who's watching, my three favorite things in the world are sex, food, and music. Because no matter what mood I am in, if yeah. you put any of those in front of me, I'm going to turn this round upside down. That's awesome. That's awesome. Right? For me, I would add to that dancing dancing Ooh. like I can shift yes. my mood like that just by putting on like even if I'm in a shitty ass mood just putting on music and dancing <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah absolutely do you how often do you dance um oh, probably like five or six times a week in some yeah. capacity like even if it's only right? for five or ten minutes like in my bathroom by myself I share it out all the time like anyone from Instagram who's watching this like I share my <laughs> dancing on my Instagram stories all the time it's like my little my little pla dance platform all right so if you guys need some dancing motivation check out Kat on the Instagram yeah which is super great so Kat tell us okay so tell us a little bit about you about what you do and and then I want to ask you about your book because Kat is also an author so yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, everything I do is so much an extension of who I am that it's it's interesting because at the beginning I struggled to put labels on it because <laughs> yeah. I'm like how do, I, how do I put myself in a box I don't know like half the time I'm a hot mess I don't know what I'm doing I'm just I'm sharing what I need to share and spreading my message and helping people <laughs> um but a lot of it revolves around it, it actually all revolves around like coming home to true self 
and mm. whatever that means. So specifically like in the fields of sexuality and for women mm. really tapping into desire and really making self honoring choices. Um, and, and spiritually, spiritually, because really that is like our higher self, our divine connection. So I feel like everything I do, like if I had to put a foundation to everything I do, like that would be the one sentence that sums it all up is like coming home to true self in all the ways we can do that. Yeah. And so I do that through the platforms of like teaching workshops, through coaching, um, mm -hmm. my writing and just like doing videos and blogs and all the things. Badass Instagram posts. Yeah. Yeah. I like to see your booty on Instagram. This <laughs> I love the Instagram. Instagram has been such a place for me to utilize my self-expression and like, and take people through my own. It's really, it's interesting. Cause it's like, it's like, it's almost like everything I write on all my posts on Instagram, I, mm -hmm. I could be saying to myself and we're such, we're such a collective that I always know there's somebody that can also hear that and relate to that. And yeah, totally. Yeah. Is that where do you get the most inspiration from when mm. it comes to when it comes to like, it's like your Instagram posts, for example, like, because people always ask me that they're like, so what like inspires you? Or are you just living this like crazy life? And I'm like, a little nuts, <laughs> but B, <laughs> like, in the best way possible. And like, where do you get your inspiration? Right? from in here it's like mm. it's just in me and what's coming to mind right now and part of me is part of me is like no don't share that you can't say that on facebook but part of Danny me has this like inner rock star that loves to be witnessed and loves to be seen and when i started sharing like more explicitly on instagram and facebook i've had to tone it down on facebook because i kept getting um kicked out and like banned off my <laughs> my own page so i was like okay maybe i gotta tone it down um but so when i started doing that i actually went through i went through a bit of an internal conflict because there was part of me that loves to be seen loves to be witnessed and and thus, that's why I share it publicly. And then there was this other part of me that was judging myself for that of like, why do other people need to see this? Why do you need to share this with other people? Why can't that just be something you keep to yourself? And then of course, at times, that's the feedback I'll get if somebody's coming at me with criticism. And it's like, so it hits on that own self doubt voice. But so part of my like coming home to my true eroticism and my true sexual self is expressing that publicly like that is a part of my erotic being and my eroticism and just fucking owning that like just owning that like this is who yes. i am like i show myself Own it. online like i probably would show more if i wouldn't get banned because that's how passionate i am about it and that's how much i want to give other women permission to own that part of themselves too like whether that's sharing it publicly whether that's dancing down the street fucking naked or whether that's just in the privacy of her own bed touching her pussy touching her breasts dancing in front of the mirror like reclaiming that for whatever it means to us you know yeah mm. yeah mm. fucking love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's just so good. so good so i have a question so when you first started getting into this work and then you started because so part of your eroticism is showing mm -hmm. which as the sex therapist in me as you're speaking is like ooh, exhibitionist a little bit maybe I don't know if she's got some voyeur tendencies we're definitely exhibitionist yeah. which is hot yeah. right that's that's your jam yeah but did you any face any like self slut shaming stuff right because like because that's always a part of this when like especially like you know I talk about sex you talk about sex we talk about all these different things and mm -hmm. I know at some there was a part in my career um, where I was listening to like the slut shamers, right? One of them was my own partner who was like, you can't look mm -hmm. like that. Like, you can't say these things. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and then I, like, I believed it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, why do I want to show myself? Right. Why do I want to show my body? Like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? What does that do? And now when I post, I guess you want to fucking call them a little bit more provocative. I don't know. Whatever the language is. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm like, like, topless and it's my back or whatever right whatever um there was a little bit of me that had to like come to comfort 
with that self slut shaming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you go, did you have that same kind of similar experience? Uh, absolutely. And what comes to mind is like, I feel like I had more of that experience growing up because mm -hmm. I felt really sexual from such a young age. And like, there's always been this like adventurer in me that wanted to, and also I think that was like the, the inner rock star too, is like, I wanted, I wanted attention from boys. I wanted to, I wanted to be engaging in that kind of way for, from a really young age. So I was sexually active really young. And part of that, of course, there was some shadow in that and some um, mm -hmm. healing of self-worth stuff, but yeah, I mean, I got, I got slut shamed a lot from like girls in my high school. And, and now as I step out and do this work and share it more publicly, a part of me is like going back and reclaiming that from that younger version of me too. And yeah. accepting that that was okay. The way I was expressing that was okay that I wanted to explore. Like that's okay. And our culture yeah. has so much shame around it that then I internalized that shame and so, yeah, again, like every time I'm sharing now on, on social media or anything I'm talking about, I feel like it gets less and less all the time, but there's mm -hmm. totally that void. There's always that little like inside. It's like, no, don't share that. Uh, yeah. yeah, we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should that. That's inappropriate. Are my titties too much today? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. or, <laughs> and, and this is like, this I find so important to talk about too, because there's kind of this like, um, there's like the side of it where it's like showing your natural eroticism or where it's almost okay. like um, being sexy, but not in an overly sexy way mm -hmm. is beginning to be more okay online. But then it's like, yeah. if you're really <laughs> like dressed up or done up, like I've had criticisms from that too. Like someone commented one time, it was something about um, like, I, I, I get your message, but I think it's getting lost because in a lot of your pictures, you have makeup on and you seem like you're posing. And I had to sit with that because initially it hit a trigger within me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I need to really sit with this. I need to, I need to feel out like how much of what this person is saying is true and how much of it, um, how it's much just, is their projection? It, how much of it is their projection? How much of it is actually my truth? Totally, right? totally. And yeah. I had to get honest with, with myself and, and really and sit with it and, and go, yeah, I guess there is a part of me that like that likes being seen and that wants um, that does like the attention because I think otherwise I would just do it on my own. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't be sharing it. But then there's that part of empowering other women. And then there's the part of like, as women, we have a fucking choice how we show up. If we want to do ourselves to the nine and and put on heels and a dress and be sexy as fuck <laughs> and go out there, that is okay. And if we Absolutely. have to be bare ass, face naked, no makeup on, <laughs> frizzy hair, whatever, that is yep. okay. It's all yep. okay. And <laughs> yeah. And so I think like, what pants are sexy? What's that? What pants are also sexy? Totally. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially and they're on people with penises and they wear <laughs> and they don't wear underwear underneath it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Has any, have you seen that? Have you seen that like John Hamm? There's like a John Hamm meme. You know who John Hamm? No. John Hamm. What was he from? Like Mad Men. He was like from one of those okay, okay. shows. Yeah, yeah. But it, part of his reputation is that he's like, I mean, I don't want to say gifted down there because like, I mean... <laughs> I think all genitalia is a gift, <laughs> but he was given the longer edge and end of the stick. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay like that was... So there's all of these pictures. So for those of you who like love looking up pervy pictures, uh, check out John Ham John in sweatpants, and he never wears underwear. And it's like, and it's like a full on like Google search thing. John Ham in sweatpants, and it's like, and it's hot. Well, I, don't care. I know it's what hot. I'm doing tonight. <laughs> After this call. <laughs> it's so good it's so good well okay so so we're talking about that we're talking about slut shaming we're talking about like just being women and showing up mm -hmm. right so being women showing up for herself showing up for other women right which is always a thing now here's a question that i know i get asked a lot so i want to ask you a lot mm -hmm. i want to ask you a lot i want to ask you right now <laughs> um a do you get a lot of unsolicited dick pics? And B, what do you do about them? I actually don't 
get a ton of dick pics. The nice thing is, is um, I think Instagram automatically filters them. Like it blurs it out. It's like, we flagged this as inappropriate. So I've gotten a few of those. Um, I, I, get a lot. I want that feature. What's that? I want that feature. I didn't get <laughs> yeah. that feature. I don't know. I got split screen feature. I didn't get like blurred out dick pic. Feature. We gotta we gotta trade features. We gotta share features with each other. <laughs> yeah, I get blurred out dick pics. Um, I also I find more than dick pics. I get just messages that feel like an invasion of my boundaries. And mm. so um, initially, I would just ignore them. Mm-hmm. Now I block people. The first time I get mm-hmm. a message like that, I block. I block the person. Um, or if they, or if I get a creepy comment, I, I just block it. Like I forgive and delete, yeah. forgive and delete. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with it? What do you, what do you, what's your reaction? What do you, what do I do with my dick pics? Yeah. My unsolicited. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was one point that I was actually collecting them cause I was going to start like, this was before, this was like a few years ago when I first started getting into this work and I was starting to collect them cause I was going to start like a Tumblr wall of dick pics. I was going to be like, <laughs> like, like the Dr. Carlin Tumblr wall of all the dick pics she gets because I love it. uh, it's like insane sometimes. <laughs> um, so sometimes what do I do? So sometimes what I do is I just delete it. I just delete and block right away. Yeah. I'm like, I just like, I don't even understand how you thought that that was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't what? And then sometimes I just razz right back. Yeah. Sometimes I feed the troll because then I'm like, well, I'm about to be your troll because I'm going to own you yeah. right now. Yeah. And here's how we're going to do this, right? So so sometimes I do feed the troll because I think it's really interesting. And I like to ask, like, I literally ask people, I'm like, what part of you made you think that this was okay to send me? Yeah. That's literally what I asked. I was yeah. like, what made you think that this was okay to send me and that I wanted it? Yeah. And then sometimes I get a response and sometimes I don't. Yeah. And then I get, and then sometimes I get the like, well, like, I didn't know, like, what to say to you, like, because, like, you're you, and, like, that's really cool, and, like, can we go on a date? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just sent me an unsolicited dick pic. That is not the way to pick me up. That's not or how to ask like, me out. No. <laughs> like, don't use, that's not the pickup line. I love cheesy pickup lines. Yeah. I actually had this conversation last night. I love cheesy pickup lines. I think they are incredible. They're the best. Like, if people use a cheesy pickup line on me, I'm like, um, let's play. Like, let's just, let's just play. Let's have a good time. Let's see what happens, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I'll give it to those. But the but the dick pics like they kind of razz me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And pussy pics, I get them both. Though. Really, I've never yeah. got a pussy pic. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> message you the first time I get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want somebody send her one. No, I'm kidding. Don't do it. It's unsolicited. You do not have her consent unless she says so. Yeah, it's so <laughs> interesting how people um, like it is. I'm so curious about what part in a person thinks that because someone shows up online a certain way that they're at, that they're asking for that or inviting that. Um, it's interesting, but I really think it just comes back to that, like coming home to yourself, your own empowerment and, and just aligning with what's true for you. Well, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes people don't know what to do with their sexuality. Mm. Do you Mm -hmm. find that at all? Mm. Like in the work that you do, like people are just like, I got all of this. I got all of this and I don't know what to do about it and I'm overwhelmed by it. So I just got to like project it out, right? Yeah. In a million different ways. So whether that's like sending an unsolicited dick pic, whether that's like sending a, a cheesy pickup line, whether that's just like, you know, uh, just being kind of rude in a bar or like rubbing up on somebody or just trying to pick up, like ferociously trying to pick mm-hmm. up, right? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes that there's a lot of people out there who are trying to figure out what sexuality means, what their body means, mm-hmm. how that translates into their lives and how they can bring that forward, especially people who are recognizing the fact that they are a little bit kinkier or have a little bit more of an interesting kind of approach to sexuality, mm-hmm. right? That it is less vanilla, right? They don't know what to do. It's like, it's like, you're just like this ball of like yeah. intensity. Yeah. And then see what happens yeah right. yeah because we're not like the crazy thing well first of all I, I find that I tend to attract to me more so clients who are um 
not as expressed in their sexuality and women who are not as tapped into their desire and their libido. And, um, and it's so interesting because that was so much of my journey that of course, that's what I attract to me to work with because I really have the experience to be able to guide someone through that. So it's interesting, yeah, that I actually find I get more of the opposite. Um, but it'd be yeah. interesting, like the further I progress as I do this work, and as I, because my sexual life and my sexual adventurism it expands and is expanding more and more and more to then Absolutely. see if those are the types of people I'm then attracting. But it's so interesting because it's like we're not given a languaging for this and yeah. we're not given a space really at at all. And that's why I think the work that we do and even hopping on Facebook Lives and stuff like this and just having a platform where it's like, totally. hey, it's okay to talk about these things. Like here we are yeah. talking on the internet about these things and yep. it's okay. And then that gives other people permission to start to have that acceptance in their own life. And so then it doesn't have to be this outward explosion of sexual yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's okay too at times. So much sexual energy. Yeah. Like, you're like, whoa, go to a gym. Like, run, it <laughs> run it out, please. Do me a favor, run it out. Yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting, like, oh, uh, sorry, just that, that no, no, something pop into my head with, um, with women in our sexuality, because one thing that I struggled with for a long time is kind of knowing when to turn it on and when to turn it off once I really started igniting my sexual energy, because it was mm -hmm. like, I'd love going to the gym and I'll wear like a sports bra and, and like have skin showing. And it was almost like, like, I feel comfortable, but then it's like, am I soliciting like unwanted attention like should I turn it down should I turn it up like and kind of learning how to navigate that as a woman in mm -hmm. the world of like when and when am I wanting to pull to like use my feminine energy and like use my pussy energy and draw in someone and when am I actually wanting to like turn that off and not bring it in and like keep it out there mm -hmm. and so that in itself has been has been interesting uh, of like navigating that. We need to talk about this subject. Can we, you make a note just cause I don't have paper around me. Yeah. But we totally um, need a note, like to make a note of this so we can talk about it in my women's group. Yes. Cause I think, I think this is a really cool topic about like turning the pussy magic on and off. Right. Yeah. And what that means, what that looks like, what that language e even is that we're talking about. Cause I just had s like a huge rush of like, well, I want to turn off. Why do I have to turn off? I'm never soliciting yeah. it. I am just me. And without my consent, it means fucking nothing to you. Yeah. So thanks so much. Yeah. Right. Like, so like so many of these different things, I'm like, Wah! but like, yeah, we'll go, we'll go on that in the group. Cause I think there's a lot of women in my group that would really benefit from that conversation. Yes. Yes. Um, I, but I wrote it down. I'm like, I'm already like, I, I have like 10 points I could talk on just on that Yay. subject alone. So like, yes, yes. <laughs> I see okay. a workshop We're formulating just... around this yeah. too. <laughs> this is the workshop that we're going to be doing in the new year. So yeah. good. Um, okay. So tell everyone a little bit about, because we're just speaking about languaging. So tell everyone a little bit about uh, your book. Because you're also an author, yeah. so you're not only like a sex coach and life coach and like doing all this like badass, super awesome woman stuff, you're also an author yeah. of a book called Self. I have my book here. It's called Self. Show it up. Bring it up to the screen. Show it off. Show the cover. It's Is such it? a good cover. There you go. Yeah, it's probably um, yeah. backwards. Yeah, yeah. This is my book, Self Approved. Yeah. So it's so interesting because like I actually got into this work through writing my book where. I think most people do it the opposite way, um, mm. but I just follow my inner voice and my inner voice told me, you're writing a book. <laughs> and yeah. okay. th I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I'll do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the first, the first probably third of it is my memoir and really okay. my journey growing up and, and just through school and the different challenges I faced and all the self-rejection I experienced and then kind of that full circle moment of hitting what for me felt like a rock bottom. What, what was just like, where do I go from here? Who am I? What is this life that I'm, it was almost like I opened my eyes in a life that I didn't recognize. 
that Mm -hmm. like when my soul came into this body was like, we didn't, this isn't what we, what we decided you were going to do. So yeah, that's not what I signed up for. Yeah. (laughs) And And like, so for those of you watching, how many of you know that feeling? Like how many of you know that feeling of like, all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, this is not the life I signed up for. This is like, what, 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 what just happened? Where am I? What am I doing? Who am I working with? Who's laying down beside me? Right? Like now I got these kids, like how many of you out there watching right now are thinking like, shit, I know that feeling. You might be in that feeling right now. Like 2018 might be, you know, where you're feeling it. Right? Yeah. You just felt it before, right? Like you, you discovered it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And it sparked the book. Is that what sparked your book? Totally. Yeah. That's what sparked my book. And so I, I started going on just this, like, I almost like turned off my outside life. Like I disconnected from all the people I was friends with. I really just retreated and went inward and started traveling the world by myself and really just like taking my comfort zone and like jumping, jumping right fucking out of it. And, (laughs) but seeking, I was just spending time with me and trying to understand myself and trying to understand like deeper than that, like what this fucking life is about like what is it about and i always yeah. said like where's the manual like i'm like did everybody <laughs> else like get a manual and i didn't get one cuz i'm confused like how do we know how to be in the world how do we know even what next action to take like what like it was so i was just asking such big questions and yeah i started it was interesting cuz then on that seeking journey i came across a writers retreat that was in Bali and it was like write the first draft of your book in 30 days and I oh, no, I like in Bali what's that it's like no big deal I'll just write my book in 30 days in Bali <laughs> it's in Bali and I was like worst worst life decision ever right <laughs> yeah <laughs> I shouldn't have done that I regret it I highly regret it <laughs> no I fucking clicked on it and I was like I don't even know what I'm fully writing about yet but I'm going there I'm supposed to be there. I'm going there. And I, I applied, I had my interview and I, I went and I wrote the first draft of my book. And this is what's really interesting is the first draft of my book was more about my own healing. It was like, just like getting it out of me, like what I needed to say, what I needed to share. And then over the next like two years, I think it was, yeah, still another two or three years until I actually published it. So I wrote probably two or three drafts within that time. It kind of mm. shifted each time and it turned, it morphed into this like tool for other people. And kind of what I feel like is the manual to tap in to that soul voice. So in this, so the first like third is my memoir and then the rest of it is teachings that I call Be Yourself Blueprint. And it's really like tapping into your soul wiring and how Mm. to like, how to interpret that, how to, how to interpret that from the inside out and tangibly live it externally. Cause I think we all have those inner senses. We all have those inner, like that inner voice or intuition, but there's for myself anyways, it was like, I didn't know what it meant. I wasn't able to articulate it into words and I wasn't able to articulate it into my life. And so this book was really just like breaking down the processes to, to tap into that and to understand what's going on in our inner world inside of us. And yeah, so it's like, I still use it. Like I still use everything each of that. And that's one thing I want to talk about in, in, um, um, in like coming home to your true self or like finding your authentic self is like, it's not a one time thing that you just get there and then you live there forever more. Yeah. It's like a constant unfolding journey. It's a constant path. And, and sometimes most of the time it walking off the path and running straight into a closed door is the path. Yeah. Like that is the path. That's yeah. how you yeah. know absolutely where you're going and I think that's so important to like share and talk about because there can be this kind of illusion of like oh I find my true self and I just live in forevermore with my path clearly defined before (laughs) me and it's like no fuck I run into walls all the time still but it's different it's from a different (laughs) energy and it's from a different place and it's like wow cool what can I learn from this or wow cool like 
like what really feels if this doesn't feel genuine to me what really does feel genuine to me so it's like running into the yeah. closed doors just as important as running as as having the clear path before you absolutely absolutely how long did it take you to write your book three and a half years oh from are you am I cutting out for you like you're am, am I oh are you cut am I yeah, cutting out for you like you're cutting out for me a little bit you we were, and out? now I think you're back. <laughs> now I think you're back. Am oh, I back for you? Here we go. P.S. Oh, are we still? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. P.S. I don't know. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. <laughs> no? Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now you're like, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can you see the comments on this video, by the way. Um, I can. I can now. Yeah. Or am I the only one who can? Or am I the only one who can see the comments? I can see the sum coming up. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, you keep cutting out. This is. This, you keep cutting out. This is so sad. <laughs> I'm wondering, I'm going to move. If I move oh. locations, can you? Oh, no. Is it snowing in Edmonton? I can see. Is that what's happening? <laughs> oh, there we go. I can see you now. Can you see me now? I, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, OK, great. Because you, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm like, uh, what? OK, so the funny thing is. Um, is that while we're having this like really great conversation about your book and like the work that we do and how we actually help people, there's this like great, I don't know if you can see the comments, but there's this like really great couch trolling thing that's happening here. Like, like it's like people are like, I'm here for the couch auction. What's happening with the couches? There's a whole bunch of couch talk happening. And it, it makes me laugh because this is the kind of shit that these people are at home fucking doing on a Thursday <laughs> night because they're at home trolling people about a couch while we're having like a real conversation about life. And they're like, let's talk about a couch. And like, you know what? Way to fucking go, you guys. <laughs> and I love it. That's so funny because I didn't, I didn't even notice. I think I've, I've um, trained myself to tune out from from live oh, comments yeah. or even like the live numbers because when I first started it's doing crazy. lives it really distracted me and so I just like it's kind of like blocking out white, white noise now but that's funny I didn't know that was going on yeah there's like a there's like a serious like couch conversation happening in oh. the comment like you're saying I'm listening to you but like the the comments are coming right in front of my face so I'm like this, <laughs> this is hilarious right now what's with the couch and why is everybody obsessed with the couch do you not have good couches at home is that what's happening? Like, are you like, why are we, what is happening out? Like, what is going on? Like, why are we, we're pretending there's a couch auction. I just find people are so weird and they're so great. <laughs> like, <laughs> and at the same time, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh, Thursday night, Dr. Carl live. You never know what's going to happen. These are the people anything. that need help tapping into their own creative expression. <laughs> I was, no, I was thinking, I was thinking about that driving today, um, about like, about when I'm judging other people, like when I'm criticizing other people, like whether it's in my own head or out loud and I try to really monitor it, but also when other people do, when I see other people doing that to other people or to myself and I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. every time that that happens, like every time I'm doing that to someone else or I see someone like, uh, like trolling someone else or criticizing someone else or trying to bring them down. It is almost always because that person is not living in their full potential. They're not Absolutely. living in their creative expression. And when we're not mm -hmm. tapped into who we truly are and living in that energy, it's like, it's got to go somewhere, right? It's like that energy has totally. got to be like, forced out so kind of like the sexual energy we we're talking about right yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. so much fucking energy like i gotta get it out so like you're doing really well i'm gonna try and drag you down and like it's almost yeah. like it's almost like living in expression or success can trigger people who aren't um who aren't tapped into their own just their own self their own totally. expression 
And I'm okay with it because as we've been actually having a real conversation where there are some really awesome people who are watching and listening to us and who are going to totally go out and buy your book and doing all that stuff, because of this like random couch trolling that's happening on the video right now, our numbers have like doubled in viewers. Like, <laughs> like this is great. Like troll me all you want because I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, go ahead. Troll because I'm getting the views. Perfect. And I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, couch people. You... I salute you. <laughs> Anyways, so self approved by Kat, and I want to pronounce your proper name. Tra is it Tremarco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremarco. Am I saying that right? Yep. It's yep. really important for me to learn that. So, Tremarco? Yeah. Self approved by Kat Tremarco. What is about you? It's about your journey. It's about your journey with your, yourself, your body, your identity, your self image your confidence your body confidence am i missing anything yeah like what yeah i guess yeah. i didn't share this but it's hugely my journey into sobriety um because wow. around the same time i started writing the book i got sober and i'd been abusing drugs and alcohol since i was like 13 like binge drinking on the weekends getting really high on the weekends um pawning it off for a lot of years on just being like just being young and this is just what we do and da 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 da, da but really <laughs> really um trying to soothe a deeper pain that was going on within me so a lot of i talk a lot about that a lot of, of my journey into sobriety and and that when i got sober it because it was confronting because i was like now i have to really look at myself in the mirror and i really have to confront the parts of myself that i've been suppressing down or that i've been um trying to run from and yeah, so that kind of was all at the same time. It was like this this soul searching, getting sober, and then writing the book, and and then being called to be a teacher and be a leader and really um, and really share my wisdom and share my inner knowings with other people and tapping into my own spiritual gifts and connection and really like not holding back on that. So, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> beautiful yeah what okay so for those of you so for the people who are watching and they're like i'm running out to buy her book tomorrow do all that kind of stuff what is one of the biggest or for you as the author of the book what is one of the biggest takeaways that you hope for people to kind of get from reading your book you're not fucking broke I talk about that and plug in my phone because it's gonna die okay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the biggest thing is like, you're not broken. You're not so much of life is a misinterpretation. So much of life is a misunderstanding of who you are. And it's like, we're born into this world with this unique soul and this unique expression of who we are. And then we look outside and see that other people aren't necessarily living in alignment with what we feel internally and so it's really about tapping into who you are on the inside who you are on a soul level and then living in that expression living that outwardly so that would be my biggest fucking biggest thing like mm, your inner world biggest. live your true self yeah yeah, and like, and, and, ha and, and how to do that. Because I think that that's like a term that's thrown around so much, it actually pisses me off, even though I say it half the time. Because <laughs> I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Like, what does it mean yeah. to live your true self? Like, how, how do I know what that is? What like, today that that's mean? pink hair, tomorrow that might be, you know, like, I don't know. So, um, so that's what it is. It's like yeah, a manual. It's like a manual on how to, how to live your true self. So to you, what does that mean? What does it mean to live your true self? To me, that means honoring what is inside of me over and above what is being presented externally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is me over what is presented externally by yeah. what you are presenting externally? or by what others are putting upon you by who I think I should be and by who the world thinks I should be. So yeah. it's kind of like the ideal self is like that external self 
And like yep. the soul self is that, that internal self. And yep. it's really about, for me anyways, about aligning the two constantly. Totally. Yeah. So then why the title self-approved? It was funny when I was um, writing it, it wasn't called self-approved. I was calling it be all that you envy because I felt like for so long there was like this thing I wanted that was out there. I'd see it in other people, but I couldn't have it. And as I started waking up to who I really was, I'm like, oh, I already am all those things. <laughs> like, <laughs> I already am all the things that I admired in other people and I looked up to in other people. And um, as I was writing, actually, my editor was like, that's a bad title. <laughs> <laughs> which like hurt my ego for about 10 minutes or so yeah I was like what yeah, do you like, mean it's a bad title and then uh she spent life yeah like, but I've been working on this for three years um <laughs> yeah. and, and so I kind of just put it out there like to the universe to my to my higher self and set the intention of like I need a good title for this book and it just kind of came to me one day I was like self-approved and I was like yeah self-approved like and I actually got it tattooed on my hand like you probably can't see Do you? It, but oh no yeah you totally need to show it that is the title of your book and you had it tattooed that's hot yeah so I did that in the springtime but yeah it just felt like like fuck yeah like just self-approved self-approved so that's kind of how it came oh, about oh it. yeah right yeah I but love it, that. it actually was challenging to ah uh, to like you take a book, you know, and it's a story and it's processes and then you're told to put a title on it, like a title and a subtitle. And it's like, how do I sum up all this juiciness of my own life and the processes that I'm teaching other people in a title? Like that was a really trippy, trippy thing for me to wrap my head around at first because it was so reversed like I wasn't like here's the title and the pretty layout and now I'm going to put the content in it was like the content came out from within me and then I had to figure out how to package it in a way that made sense to to other people mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah there we go here we go and I was like okay here we go. <laughs> it's funny the other you know you can't like you cut out for a second I was like and we're back. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because I, I actually had uh, I had this conversation the other day with a friend of mine, and uh, I, I texted my best friend, and I said if I had to put a name on the this chapter of my life right now, if I was going to write a book about like my love life or something, right? So like this chapter of my life, what I would call it is uh, would be. Um, wolves who can't drive <laughs> wolves who can't drive I love it. That, that's what this chapter would be called wolves yeah. who can't drive because i keep finding these people who like are the like their spirit animals like wolves and like the whole archetype or whatever and like none of them can drive or like don't have a car or like are afraid to like it's like this whole thing right so when you're talking about titles right i'm like like, I literally had this conversation the other day. I was like, if I find one more person that I'm attracted to that, like, can't drive or doesn't have a car or something like that, I don't know. Is that, like, like a Toronto struggling. thing? Is that, like... <laughs> I don't even... I'm not even in Toronto right now. I'm in London, Ontario. Oh. Like, you have to own a car <laughs> to live in London. Like, it's... I mean, you don't have to, but it just takes, like, an extra 20 minutes to kind of get everywhere, right? Yeah. Like, in London, you can kind of zip around really quickly, but you kind of need, it's like one of those, like, you kind of need a car cities. Like, there is public transit, but, like, we don't have a subway yet. We don't have, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, the, the personality, like, I love titles because there's such, like, a personality and a reason why people title mm -hmm. things, right? Even mm -hmm. though it might be obscure to everyone else or might be um, hidden meanings behind anyone else. But, like, it's your, it's your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's your words. It's your story. And I love your title. I love self-approved. I think you. that's so awesome. Yeah. 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 It is awesome. So, so my darling, is there anything else that you would love for people to know about you, about your book, about your work, about anything else like that? Fuck, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, what else?
do you want to share with this world? <laughs> what comes to mind is that I'm starting my second book right now, actually. So it's like, it's so interesting because by the time a book comes out, I'm like, oh, I'm already creating new things. And then I'm like, oh yeah, and I have this awesome book I, I already wrote, but like I'm writing a second one and I have a third one that's like outlined on my wall right beside me right here. Um, so I guess I'm just, I'm just excited about that. I'm excited to be stepping out further and sharing more of my work with the world and with, Yay. yeah, just like, just connecting and yeah. I'm excited. Like, and I guess what I was like, I'm just fucking getting started. So <laughs> this is just the beginning. Yeah. This is just the beginning. Snap, 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 snap. snap. Yeah. It's just the beginning. Do you have a title for your next book so that people can, can pay? Do we have a title yet? Or a working I, title? I do. I do have a working title, but I almost don't even want to share it because it'll probably change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might get told by an editor that it's a bad title again. <laughs> This is why authors hire editors because like different different skill sets. Um, yeah, guess, absolutely different skill sets. Yeah, like, I guess the other it. thing would be that um, we don't have a couch here, you guys. There's no couch. <laughs> the cap You're in the wrong the chat for. box. <laughs> <laughs> the couch trolls were killing me. I'm sorry, but the couch <laughs> trolls were like they were making me laugh legitimately. <laughs> That's fun. Does that happen to you a lot? Do you get when you're doing a lot or when you're doing your show? Does that happen a lot? <laughs> no, no, I get like some like obscure, like last week we made lady balls. So a vegan fr a chef friend of mine came over and we made these energy balls for sex. So we, we called them lady balls and Love. they were like this really like power energy, like energy balls that you buy, like, you know what I mean? Like when, grab and go kind of thing but we made them so that you can like grab and go for sex, right? Cause like, especially if you're doing like a sex marathon, right? You don't want to cook halfway through the sex marathon, but you want to have a snack every once in a while, right? So... I love that. <laughs> yeah. So we made lady balls and it was really, really great. And then one guy started watching and was like, you're not getting naked? Why aren't you getting naked? Wait, is this a fucking cooking show? And I was like, yes. We're making food. We're making food for sex. Welcome to the oh, show. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> this is why I love live. That guy's whole night. <laughs> yeah, I was like, did you really think that was gonna happen on Facebook? Did I give you any indication? Did I even give you a titty pic that is going to even make you think that anything like me naked was gonna happen? Because hands down, not happening. <laughs> Anyway, you got to come to Instagram yeah, for that. The couch trolling, though, has been my favorite. Yeah. Oh, is Instagram Live fun? What's that? I haven't done that one yet. Oh. I haven't tried Instagram Live. Ah, oh, you got to get on there. Get on there. <laughs> okay, well, we'll do that next. Me and you. Me and you and, Ed and Edmonton. I'm going to save that experience. You, I would like you to yeah. take my Instagram Live virginity. Yeah. And we'll do that when I come and visit you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah we got to talk more about, yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I've got ideas bubbling up now, but mm -hmm. I just did see that somebody yeah. commented well, amidst will. the couch stuff. I can't remember who it was, but she asked, is your second book a continuation of the first? And I just want to say that like, Good yes. Question. And that. it was kind of a ways back as you were talking, I saw it scroll by, but I, I sorry I didn't catch the name whoever asked that but it is and it isn't so it's almost like um everything I create is really an extension of something that I've lived and something that I've gone through so the second book is going to be all about um understanding spiritual law versus man-made law like versus human law and uh really understanding our own worthiness as spiritual beings and kind of all the places that the misinterpretations from that come up in life in different situations and through having that reflected to us externally by different people mm -hmm. and how our unworthiness mm -hmm. gets internalized and really dismantling all those beliefs and coming coming home to our worthiness again so um, but again, that was like the next part of my journey after this book. So then of course it comes out in something that I then want to teach other people. So yeah, just wanted to hit on that, I guess. 
So yeah. exciting. So exciting yeah. that your second book is coming out. This is the best. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, my darlings, thank you for watching. Thank you for trolling me about a couch. Love you guys. <laughs> thank you, Kat, for like coming on. <laughs> this is going to be the best. Um, thank you, Kat, for coming on. Honestly, sincerely appreciate thank it. You. Love have, having you on, talking about your book, talking about your work. Best. Like, honestly, the best. So for you watching, for you guys at home watching, stay tuned. We're going to be doing some more work together this year. I'm really excited. She's got a book coming out. I'm just doing me too. We're all hanging out and having a good time. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Kat, for being on. I thank appreciate you I love for having it. me here. Next week, my friends, next week, my darling friends, stay tuned because next week, Dr. Kind of Life is a brand new episode. Woo -woo. And next week, I have a super sexy guest called the Army of Sass. Ooh. And the arm, I know, I'm really excited about this. The Army of Sass is coming on. And uh, the, the woman who owns that company, Sarah, is uh, going to be teaching me some fun things that you do in heels to music. Just saying, you might want to watch next week. Anyways, <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for watching at home. Thank you, Kat, for coming on. I love you guys. Mwah. Have the best night ever. Bye. <laughs>